And now, a minute from our conservation partner, the Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. My name is Joellen Wilson. I'm the Juvenile Tarpon Habitat Program Manager for Bonefish and Tarpon Trust, and I'll be discussing juvenile tarpon and snook nursery habitat. Juvenile tarpon and snook both depend on mangrove wetlands and salt marshes and other backwater ponds and creeks that are difficult to reach, mostly for predators, but it's also places where we're not usually fishing. Prime nursery habitat includes mangrove roots or other types of vegetative structure that serve as a refuge and protection from predators such as larger fish or birds. These habitats also have deep pools that can be used as a temperature refuge. As juvenile tarpon and snook grow, they make their way out of the nursery habitat into larger bays and into estuaries. But these nursery habitats are especially vulnerable to development. With 50% of Florida's population living near the coast, land is being developed constantly. Mangrove forests are one of the most threatened coastal habitats in the world. Florida alone has lost 50% of its mangrove habitat and 9.3 million acres of wetlands, more than any other state in the nation. Identifying these nursery habitats for protection and also potentially restoration is crucial to the future of the fishery for snook and tarpon. To learn more and to make your voice heard, visit btt.org.